In sessions 1 to 3 of this webinar series, I demonstrated some of the basics of using MathCAD Prime to calculate and communicate mathematically, to create self-documenting engineering worksheets using MathCAD, and to employ MathCAD's computer algebra and numerical methods capabilities. This week's topic will focus on data analysis. I will show how to use MathCAD's matrix tools to import and analyze data. First, we will look at the case of inputting data into a matrix by hand. Afterward, I will show how to use MathCAD functions to import sensor data into a worksheet and use it to solve engineering problems. Since part Parts 1 and 2 of the webinar series demonstrate how to create math and text and engineering worksheets. I will use starter files for today's demos to progress more quickly through the content. In many activities where small vehicles or robots are built, performance is related to a coefficient of friction between the vehicle and the surface on which the vehicle is deployed. This example illustrates a technique for determining this coefficient. I have borrowed the procedure in this example from a post to the Chief Delphi First Robotics community. The URL is shown here. The steps I will use in collecting my data are also listed. Imagine that I've designed designed and built my vehicle or my robot and that it's going to perform on a carpeted field. In order to determine the coefficient of friction experimentally, I'm first going to cover a large piece of plywood with the field covering. Then I'll set the vehicle onto the plywood with the wheels locked so that I can observe the angle at which the vehicle first begins to slip when the board is raised. As I tilt the board slowly upwards, I observe the vehicle carefully and I measure and record the angle that the board makes with the floor when the robot begins to slide. And I'm going to repeat this test five to ten times and record the data. As you can see, I have pre-populated my MathCAD worksheet with text blocks and text boxes portraying the context for my demonstration. Matrices are a powerful tool for handling data. MathCAD Prime allows me either to enter data directly into a matrix or to use an input structure called a table to create data column vectors. In this instance, I will use a table to enter the data from the repeated measurements of the angle at which the robot robot begins to slide. To insert a table into the worksheet, I will place the insertion cursor beneath the label for experimental data. Then I'll click on the matrices tables tab. On the left edge of the ribbon, I find the icons for insert matrix and insert table. When I left click on insert table, a sizing array appears. Dragging my mouse into the array makes it easy to insert a table. Once I identify a correctly sized table, I left click to insert a table into my MathCAD worksheet. In this case, I will insert a 7 by 2 table. Returning to the worksheet, I can hover over the edge of the table region to adjust its position. The size of the table is not fixed. I can add additional columns and rows using the matrices tables ribbon. I can also remove unnecessary columns and rows. There are two placeholders above the horizontal line in the table. The first is for the variable name for the column. This placeholder is equivalent to the placeholder on the left side of an assignment operator. Beneath the variable name is a units placeholder. Adding a unit to this placeholder multiplies each value in that column of the table by the unit. In this example, I will create a column called trial, which will be unitless. I can add values for trial to the column simply by typing and using the down arrow. At this point it is helpful to point out that MathCAD uses zero based matrix addressing. Stated another way, the first row in my table is zero and I can evaluate the position trial and go to matrix operators matrix index trial sub zero will return the value of one when I place it low enough that MathCAD recognizes the definition. Similarly trial matrix index three returns the value 4. Since it is very common for both subscripted variables and matrices to be used in the same worksheet, this is a good time to highlight the difference between a matrix index and a variable subscript in a MathCAD worksheet. Clicking on the math ribbon, subscripts are part of a variable name. So when I'm typing a name for a variable, like variable trial, I can add a subscript by clicking on subscripts and typing 1. Currently, trial 1 is undefined in my worksheet. However, using the same variable name, and I can find matrix index on the math ribbon as well under operators and going down to matrix index and inserting that trial sub 1 is equal to 2. So we can see the difference between the two types of subscript notations. The matrix index appears a little bit lower and when I'm inside the math region there's a gray staple next to the matrix index. The subscript appears a little bit higher and when you're in the math region, there is no distinction to show that that is anything other than part of the variable name. To clean things up a little bit, I can hold down the control key and then click on the four math regions that I just created. And then I can select backspace, click on the backspace key to delete them all. Now I'm returning to my table. Scroll up a little bit. In this column, I want to enter the angle measurements that I made when I was lifting up the board. And I want to measure that in degrees. So I'm going to go to the math ribbon and go to units. And there are my angle units. And I can either insert the degree symbol or the 
the label degree and I'll choose DEG for degree. Now I can go into the table and I can enter these values based on the measurements that I've taken. So I'm simulating that here. And let's say that I made eight measurements. And I get to the seventh row of my table. So I'll add those values in. And I've got one more data point. So I want to go to matrices tables and I want to insert below. And my last measurement was also 34. So now I have the data from my procedure and I can evaluate trial and that will give me a vector with the values 1 through 8, and I can evaluate angle. That's actually going to report the results in radians, which is MathCAD's default unit. But you see a placeholder here to the right of the matrix, and I can click in that placeholder. I can type degrees, and it will convert the measurements back to degrees. MathCAD has a lot of built-in commands for working with data and matrices and column vectors. For example, in a worksheet where a data matrix like angle is defined as shown, we can evaluate the median value of that data matrix simply by typing median and passing it a parameter for the name of the variable. And it will return that result in this case in radians, but I can convert that quickly to degrees. In using the angle of slip data that I have in this worksheet, I'm going to calculate statistics for the number of trials, the mean, the sample variance, and the sample standard deviation using built-in functions and operators. I'll then use the mean statistic and the standard deviation to calculate the coefficient of friction as the tangent of alpha, the mean angle measurement. Using the standard deviation, I will then establish a band around the mean that we can use if we want to have a more conservative or a more liberal coefficient of friction. The formula for tangent is based on a known method for calculating coefficient of friction. If you'd like to see a derivation of it, you can go to uh, this URL. There are a couple different ways I can calculate the number of trials. I'm going to use two different functions from the matrix table a ribbon. When I left click on vector matrix functions and I scroll down, there's both a last function and a length function. If I left click on length, that's going to insert the length function and that'll return the integer number of elements in the vector. So when I click length and then type angle and then evaluate it, it'll tell me that there are eight elements in vector angle. If I use last, and I'm going to do this just to show again that MathCAD uses a zero-based matrix addressing system. When I click last, of angle, that returns the value 7, it's the number on the last row. But I can use that to create my variable for the number of trials. If I go to operators and I insert a definition operator and I want to call the number of trials n, I can edit my expression here and say last angle plus 1 and when that gets evaluated n is now the same as the length. So again, MathCAD's matrices start with row 0 and column 0 here, but now we have a statistic for the number of trials. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to add a page just to give me a lot of space to calculate the remainder of my statistics. I will now add definition statements to calculate alpha, the mean angle measurement, capital V, the variance and angle measurements, and capital S, the sample standard deviation. Using the Greek letter alpha for the mean angle, I can insert an alpha symbol from the math ribbon by going to symbols and going down and selecting alpha. Once I have this symbol, I'm going to type a colon to insert a definition operator, and then I'm going to go to the functions tab and go to statistics, left click on that, and go down and find the statistical function to calculate a mean. When I left click on that, I can insert multiple variable names, but I only want the one in this case, and I can use inline evaluation to return the result in radians, and then type DEG to convert that to degrees. And now I have a mean value for the angle. Similarly, I want to calculate the variance. I'm going to type a capital V. I'm going to go to math. I'm going to choose a definition operator this time. Insert that. I'm going to go to functions. I'm going to go to statistics. And I'm going to scroll down to the sample variance. And again, I can insert more than one parameter, but I will delete the extras and calculate that variance, which is also coming in radians. So I can convert that to degrees. And now there is a built-in statistical function for standard deviation, but I know that's going to be the square root of the variance. So I'm going to create a definition, go to the math ribbon, go to operators. I'm going to insert a square root, and then I'll type V in there. That value gets returned in radians and then I can convert it to degrees. So now I have the mean angle, the variance in the angle measurements, and I have the sample standard deviation, and I can move on to calculating my coefficient of friction. I will now calculate the coefficient of friction using the statistics that I've just introduced into my worksheet. So scrolling down to the section of my worksheet that I created for calculating the coefficient of friction, I'm going to define my coefficient of friction as mu sub f, and so I'll go to the math ribbon, and I'm going to insert the symbol mu, and I'm going to add a subscript f to 
denote this as a coefficient of friction. And I'm going to type a colon to insert a definition operator, and then type tangent, and then go up and insert my variable name alpha, and then I'll evaluate that. So now here's my coefficient of friction. And I also want to calculate a standard deviation of the friction coefficient, and in order to do that, I'm going to calculate the tangent of s, and that's going to return the size of a standard deviation from my coefficient of friction. And I'm going to use that to create a band, call that uh, mu sub s, go in and I'm going to insert mu again and notice that you can type the letters and then control G in order to insert these symbols mu sub s again this is going to be a subscript and I'm going to define this using a matrix so I'm going to insert a matrix and it's going to be a 2 by 1 and what this is going to be is mu sub f using my symbols mu subscript f and then plus s subscript f divided by 2 and again mu subscript f minus s subscript f divided by 2 and when I evaluate that I get a range around my coefficient of friction so I could use these values to establish either a more conservative or a more liberal coefficient of friction and be safe because I'd be within a standard deviation of my statistical data. So now I've used averaging to minimize measurement error in calculating my coefficient of friction. And we've shown how to use MathCAD's flexible matrix capabilities to handle data, calculate statistics, and document my results at the same time. So we're going to move on to the second phase of the webinar, which is importing sensor data into a MathCAD worksheet and then using these same types of capabilities to work with richer data sets.